The Royal National Lifeboat Institution, or RNLI for short, operate a 24-hour search and rescue service across 238 lifeboat stations throughout the UK. Since its inception, the RNLI have helped save 140,000 lives at sea, all whilst operating as a charity with a heavy reliability on volunteers and donations for funding. In order to ensure an effective life-saving service is in place, there is a constant emphasis on the maintenance, improvement and redevelopment of lifeboat stations across the country. These improvements include the accommodation of new lifeboats, improving crew facilities and maintaining their high levels of service. On the south coast of Cornwall, England, the town of Falmouth is home to one of the busiest RNLI lifeboat stations in the southwest region. This is largely due to its booming tourism industry in the summer months and inherent connection to the sea. In the near future, a new, larger Class B lifeboat is due to be introduced into the Falmouth lifeboat station, which is in danger of becoming unfit for purpose. Calls for improvements and expansion to the existing Falmouth lifeboat station have already been made by the RNLI and its supporting benefactors. Falmouth Town Council is also openly encouraging the addition of new sustainable developments in the area, which form the basis for the Falmouth RNLI redevelopment project. This video has been produced by CCMM Consulting to present the design, specification, delivery and function of the Falmouth RNLI redevelopment project. This project can be divided up into six key deliverables consisting of a new lifeboat station, a training college, a boat repair facility, a visitor centre, sustainable energy generation and the surrounding infrastructure. By incorporating these features into the project, a forward-thinking central hub for the RNI will be created, similar to their headquarters in Poole. This hub will aim to enhance the value of the charity, boost the local economy, improve the surrounding area and support the RNLI throughout the region. Whilst this particular project aims to create a hub within the southwest region, it has the potential to one day be replicated throughout the remaining regions of the UK. Inspiration for this project was taken from a number of existing lifeboat stations around the country and close attention was paid towards the existing buildings in and around Falmouth. This ensured the project's overall aesthetic remained in keeping with existing RNLI facilities and the surrounding area of Falmouth. When formulating the designs for the project, CCMM heavily valued sustainability, which included the use of recycled concrete and locally sourced materials. Across the project, steel frame construction has been adopted due to its ease of construction, longevity and overall efficiency. All buildings will use similar systems to increase the ease of use to the customer and decrease costs. The heating, ventilation and air conditioning for all buildings will be supplied for a water source heat pump system. This system uses much less energy than conventional systems. The design process and all aspects of the project were produced in accordance with the relevant codes and standards, including the Eurocodes, British Standards, BRIAM and Cornwall Council's Design and Construction Guidelines. When selecting the materials to be used for the lifeboat station's external facade, close attention was paid to the nearby town centre and key areas, resulting in a combination of granite stone walling and green oak cladding which will be replicated on all project buildings. By replacing the existing Falmouth lifeboat station with a modern, fit-for-purpose facility, the RNLI will be able to accommodate and implement their new Class B lifeboat whilst continuing to house its crew, HM Coast Guard staff and the existing 7 class lifeboat and pontoon. In total, approximately 500 square metres of floor space will be provided over two floors, which will include an office for the HM Coast Guard, an RNLI boat storage area, a public viewing platform, a crew room and a dedicated car park for lifeboat crew. Currently, the RNLI's only training college is at their headquarters in Poole in the southeast of England. The addition of such facilities to the southwest region would significantly reduce travel time for its staff, boost the RNLI's training capabilities, and improve their youth education services. By incorporating a sea survival pool equipped with a gantry crane into the proposed training college, the RNLI can carry out their mixed training needs for the 1,200 crew members who take part in training exercises every year. To accompany the sea survival pool, a series of offices will be provided for the RNLI staff alongside a staff canteen, a classroom and a pool viewing area. As well as this, the training college will contain two large events and function rooms with full height windows, maximising natural light. These rooms will be available for hire to the RNLI and the general public, offering an additional means of income. Adjacent to the college building will be a large car park, open to both the RNLI staff and the general public whilst maintaining access to the nearby Falmouth docks. The proposed boat repair area will see the most drastic change from the existing site by reclaiming land for an open berth structure, 
ensuring space on the already constrained site is effectively managed. An open berth design was selected due to a large local tidal range and reduced amount of fill material. Within this secure area, a 7 by 20 metre dock will be provided alongside a bespoke boat travel crane designed by CCMM and a boat repair workshop able to serve both RNLI and private vessels. By offering a boat repair service in Falmouth, RNLI vessels will be able to be repaired and maintained in the southwest as opposed to their existing repair facility in Poole. As well as this, the repair facility has the potential to be used by private vessels and generate further income. In order to help run this facility, a mezzanine office space will be provided within the boat repair workshop alongside a large indoor boat working area accessed by roller shutter doors. The proposed visitor centre forms the final building in the project and will create a much needed link to the town centre. By opening up pedestrian access between the town centre and the Falmouth RNI redevelopment, the journey distance for foot traffic will be reduced by 80%, encouraging the public to pay a visit to the site and generate funds for the RNI. Within the visitor centre, a cafe and seating area will be provided on the ground floor, and the first floor will host a museum and exhibition space, showcasing the RNI's history and heritage. Full height windows will be incorporated into both floors, making the most of the views directly onto the River Fowl. As well as this, a large outdoor seating space will also be provided. To help the other project deliverables function once complete, the infrastructure surrounding the site has been highlighted for improvement. Where possible, existing roads of good quality will be retained whilst access to the boat repair area will be modified. To accommodate an articulated lorry, a swept path analysis was conducted and a road widening proposal was made. Across the site, a series of car parks have been provided with designated parking bays for staff, disabled users and the general public. As well as this, transport links to the site were evaluated and a proposal for a new bus stop within the site was made. Connections into existing utility networks were specified with full adoption by the network provider being the preferred outcome. Sustainable energy generation forms the final deliverable for the project and was proposed to be delivered across the entire site. This will be achieved through the use of coloured solar panels on all project buildings, producing approximately 100 kilowatt hours of energy per day. To supplement the remaining 40 kilowatt hour demand of energy per day, an Enercom wind turbine will also be incorporated into the project to supplement energy demand and feed excess energy back into the grid. These measures for sustainable energy generation, alongside features such as rainwater harvesting and grey water recycling, help achieve an excellent BRIAM rating, which is replicated site-wide. These six main project deliverables will be designed, coordinated and integrated by CCMM Consulting. CCMM are a small multidisciplinary engineering consultancy based in the southwest of England with their head office located in Plymouth, two hours from the Falmouth site. The company specialises in coastal and maritime developments with a project team consisting of nine engineers from structural, civil, coastal, mechanical and marine engineering backgrounds. These disciplines are split between civil and mechanical teams headed by lead engineers that integrate to form a complete project team. Across the team, over 10 years of combined industry experience has been gained through contracting and consulting. The team consists of the project manager, Elliot wilson Shallon the lead civil engineer, Toby Baker, the innovative design manager, Cameron Hebbs, the lead coastal engineer, Aaron Peace, the finance manager, Henry Stubbs, the BIM manager, Ryan Atkinson, the risk manager, Sam Chown, the structural engineer, James Groves, and the quality manager, James Price. A SWOT analysis was conducted on the company in order to analyse the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats to CCMM. Strengths included a multidisciplinary team offering a turnkey in engineering solutions and specialising in coastal developments. A main threat being the Falmouth RNI redevelopment project not being delivered on time or within budget. And opportunities included delivering the Falmouth RNI redevelopment project to a high standard and on time. CCMM have produced a high level transition plan in order to redevelop the existing Falmouth RNI lifeboat station to a new multi purpose facility. This transition plan consists of three phases, a design phase, construction phase, and handover phase. The estimated duration for the total project from the initial design to handover is approximately one year, with an additional 1.4 years of post-occupancy design support. The construction phase of this project has been divided into three main packages, enabling the RNLI and Her Majesty's Coast Guard to continue to operate and provide their service with minimal disturbance. 
Package one will include the construction of a training college, surrounding car parking facilities, and the temporary relocation of Yara and Ali and Her Majesty's Coast Guard to a new training college facility. Adequate access will be provided from a training college facility to the sea to allow the Yara and Ali to continue to operate. Package two consists of the construction of the Yara and Ali lifeboat station and boat repair area, which will begin following the completion of package one. Package three will be completed in parallel to packages one and two and includes the construction of a visitor centre and surrounding infrastructure. The construction phase is expected to start in July 2019 with an expected handover in June 2020. It is vital that the construction period is kept to a minimum in order to reduce the disturbances to the RNLI and Her Majesty's Coast Guard's operations. Due to the relatively small scale of the project, CCMM envisages that the works will be contracted to one specialist contractor that demonstrates their ability to deliver coastal developments. One contractor will also enable the three separate construction packages and allocation of site resources to be closely managed and reduce risk. This project can be considered medium to low risk as highlighted in the risk assessment. Following the completion of the project's construction, CCMM will continue to be involved through the implementation of a soft landings aftercare strategy. The aim of this strategy is to provide the client with a seamless handover and aid in the initial running of the facility. This approach will involve a CCMM design team member, namely the soft landings coordinator, being present on site for the first six months post-construction. Following this six month initial aftercare period, the soft landings coordinator will continue to aid the RNLI's facilities management team remotely by being on call if any issues arise. The total cost for the project is estimated at £7.45 million, with the RNLI lifeboat station costing £1.3 million, the training college costing £3 million, the boat repair area costing £1.1 million, the visitor centre costing £1.2 million, the sustainable energy generation costing £260,000, and the surrounding infrastructure costing £220,000. An additional £350,000 has been included to cover the cost of the design, construction management and post-occupancy design support provided by CCMM. The majority of funding for the project will come from We Are and Alive through donations with potential funding from other sources including the local council. Payback for the capital costs will come through various income sources such as car parking charges, the visitor centre and events hire in the training college. It is estimated that the project will receive £3.1 million of income per year through these streams. From this estimated income, the Farmer for RNLI redevelopment project will break even and start receiving profits in 2022, with the profits going straight to the RNLI to help run and maintain the facility. CCMM are confident that the integrated design of the lifeboat station, training college, boat repair area, visitor centre, surrounding infrastructure and sustainable energy will create a hub in the southwest for the RNLI. We believe that this project will be a stepping stone in developing and increasing the RNLI's operating capabilities across the country. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact a member of the management team. Thank you for listening.